before y'all even go forward, man. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to this channel, man. And check out my sponsors, man. We got Blackwater. We got Greenwood Dist, man. We got Urban Intellectual. Black-owned education tools, man. Y'all better make sure y'all check out these sponsors, man. I ain't pick them for no reason. They got dope product and dope mission, man. Now back to the show. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Floyd, man. Welcome back to the Big Bro Podcast and the Driver's Seat Workshop. Listen, I want to thank everybody who's been listening, man. I've been feeling real good, man. Fall is kicking in. You see, I changed my attire, man. I got the, got the jacket going on, man, because I love fall, man. You get to toss on some layers. And uh, I'm all energized because I got my electric coconut black water, man, doing the thing. You know, I don't know if y'all seen the, uh, the video we shot, but, you know, we received a shipment of, uh, of 12... 12 of these joints, we got a box exploded all over. My fam loved it. You should watch that video, man. It was crazy. Oh, run them all out. Yeah. Yeah. Black water. Yeah. Black cherry. Yeah. Ooh. Blueberry. Yeah, look like that, man. So, you know, anybody who's been keeping up with me and my, my beer journey, man, I gotta say, I'm feeling good, man. Especially for fall. This is the perfect time. It's a perfect time to, you know, get your burly on. You know what I'm saying? You feel feel like a man up in this piece. You know what I mean? So I got a uh, got my my beard is is coming in pretty nice, but my hair too, man. So shout out to Scotch Porter, man. Shout out to Scotch Porter, man. I got my hair balm and my beard balm and my hair oil and the beard oil, man. I got it. The hair is popping, man. You know, the hair is coming in real dope. You know, when I twist it up, it's always moisturized, man. The beard, like I said, the beard for the first time in my life. Got a beard, you know, and it's feeling healthy, man. It's still coming in. Following me on my journey, then you know, started with nothing. Started from the bottom, now we here. You know what I'm saying? So, if you want to, uh, you want to step up your moisturized game, man, get your, get your groom, get your beard looking Real nice, you know what I'm saying? All of the uh all of the all of the knots is out and it's healthy, man. You know, one of the problems I had before up in here, you know, it wouldn't grow in like straight and uh soft. You know, it would be a little rough. Irritate me. I ain't like it. So every time before I used to just shave it off. But now it's feeling great, man. It's keeping me warm too. So I'm gonna keep going, man. So keep following me on my journey, man. So y'all know what it is, man. We here for chapter three of the driver's seat book, man. Shout out to anybody who got this book, man. It's a real, real small book. You could pass it on to your folks. Enjoy what's going on. But we covering the material right now. You know what I'm saying? So uh, let's go. Chapter three, man. This is the middle. This is, you know, I believe in having a centerpiece for my work. And this is the centerpiece. You know, this chapter is entitled Drive. Because at some point in life, regardless of what you've been through, regardless of your hurdles, God is your navigation. But you the one that got to get out of that back seat, get in the front seat and have the courage to drive, figure it out. Right. You got to do it. Life is active. So our first couple chapters, man, we cover. First of all, you got to know that your life is a vehicle. You got to appreciate the fact that you got a dope vehicle, man. Are you driving a damn spaceship? You know what I'm saying? That your life is valuable, you know? And secondly, you get out of the back seat of that joint. So you got to recognize what's got you strapped into that back seat. And now it's time to drive. So let's go. So the moment you hop in the driver's seat of your life, man, the first thing you're going to realize is this ain't no car. This ain't no ordinary car. Like I said, this is a spaceship, man. So you're going to look around. This ain't got like a regular steering wheel. It ain't got like just gas and, you know, just a couple of gears. Man, there's gears all over the place. It's knobs and levers you can turn, man. It's a lot to figure out. You know what I'm saying? And another thing to consider, man, because we've been in the back seat for so long, because we have not been respecting the fact that this is a dope vehicle, we ain't been treating it as such, it might not be in the best condition yet, right? It might not be. It might need a little work, so we gotta be prepared for that. We might also find ourselves just like we was when we were 16, learning how to drive, or 15, we might find ourselves in that driver's seat 
scared to death, looking out at the road, wondering, how do we do this? How do we take off? How, what if, what about other cars out there? How we know some aggressive drivers out there? What do I do to avoid that? You know, we got some trust issues from the way we've been hurt. That's real. All right, so think back to when I told you to imagine your favorite car, right? You close your eyes, you imagine the Alfa Romeo or the Maserati, whatever it was, man. Try it in on the hood, whatever it is. You know, the one thing you couldn't envision or when you see cars on the street, the one thing you can't envision is the engine in that in that car. You don't know what kind of horsepower it's hitting on. Now, in the last chapter, I had you uh, imagine your favorite car, man. You close your eyes. You came up with a Maserati or, or whatever it was, a Camaro or Shelby, whatever it was, man. And we talked about that vehicle, the value that it has, man, and how your life is exactly like that vehicle every day that you wake up. Well, here I am standing in front of a couple of vehicles right here, man. Uh, you notice the one thing you can't tell about these vehicles, you know, you can see if they're dirty or clean or you can see what the wheels look like or what if they got tint. The one thing you cannot see is the engine. The engine is on the inside. You can't always see that. It won't always appear. Sometimes you'll see a car that look like it might be a big body, but it might have a V4. It might be a, uh, you know, it might be a gas saver. You know what I'm saying? So you don't know. So we're gonna talk about some of the types of engines that we have, because as I talk about getting in your in getting in your car and driving, trust me, I'm not saying that every single person is now gonna wake up with the fire and passion to go change their life immediately. That's not how a lot of us are wired. That's not even how I'm wired. But what I'm telling you is, if you use the tricks that I got in this chapter, no matter what engine you have, you will be able to run with any car on the road. You'll be able to fulfill your dreams and your purpose, what God got for your life. So let's go, man. The whole purpose of these chapters is to tell you that what God got for you is for you. You know what I'm saying? And you're gonna go get it no matter what kind of engine you got. And let me show you how. So first of all, you talk about an alpha personality. Alphas, man, they're self-assured. They wake up with a passion burning. They got a fire. They feel like, I know I can get it. You feel it or when you're around them, they got a certain aura, right? You know, now, I ain't gonna get into the strict science of it, but I think we all know that there's certain kind of people that wake up with that kind of fire. You know, my brother, my big brother was one of them kind of people, you know? But not everybody's gonna be an alpha, right? Not everybody's gonna wake up with that natural fire. Some people are beta personalities. Now see, a beta, they fall more into the cooperative category. You know what I'm saying? That kind of person may not wake up with like, man, I'm, I, I got this idea, I'm about to take it from here to there. I'm about to go from, from, from nothing to something instantly on my own fire. I'm not, I'm not about to do that. That person might not do that, but that person might say, hey, I support you in that dream. I know a person who's taking the dream from A to Z, so let me see if I can help out in any way I can to them. Let me give them some support. Let me give them some good words. Let me give them some encouragement. Let me give them some ideas. Let me give them some criticism. Let me hate. So, you know, a beta can fall into all of those things. You know, the person that's on the side watching, the person that's like right next to the person that's doing well. Oh, my man, um, what my man uh, Robin Harris say, the man standing next to the man, that's a beta, right? So the question is, some people, to ask yourself, are you the man standing next to the man a lot? Do you find yourself in that situation? Is that your personality type? You know, maybe you're a beta. Or, you know, for me, I fall into more like an omega. You know, omega is kind of laid back. You know, they may tend to be different. They may find themselves building strength off of being different. You know what I'm saying? They, they not the person doing it. They not the person next to the person doing it. They the person on the, on the periphery like, I think I could do that a little different, you know? Or I see how they doing that and I don't like it. Or I see how they doing this and I do like it. Maybe one day I'll do it. You know, they peep everything from the outside and they may find strength in that outsiderism. That's a new word, I'm, I'm, I'm coining that. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's me, that's where I found myself. And I think a lot of you might find yourself in there too. That's why you are watching the, the video about getting out of the back seat and into the driver's seat, right? But trust me, no matter what your natural engine is, 
you can still run with the big boys and the big girls. You can still stomp with the dogs. You can still run with the alphas, right? And that's what we're talking about here today. You know how like if you late to work, I don't care if you got a $3,000 or a $2,000 beater, you can whip that bad boy in five minutes to get to work. You be passing Benzes and, and Jags, you be passing everybody, mm -mm, Beamers, swerving on Beamers to get to work because you value getting to work because that's how you've elevated that priority. You know what I'm saying? So my point is you can drive with the best alphas on the road. Trust me, difference is just that it may not naturally burn for you. So if it don't naturally burn, what that mean? You gotta light it. You gotta light it and you gotta keep lighting it every day. Every day, build a routine. So how many natural alphas we got out there? How many of y'all feel like, yo, I'll burn with this every day, man. This is how I get down. See, I gave y'all the alpha voice. Yo, I'll burn with this every day, you know what I'm saying? How many, how many uh, people out there feel like they're not natural alphas? It's cool too, I'm with you, all right? But let's go through this routine maintenance. Trust and believe that God is the navigator. God can take the passion and determination that you do have, whether it's a beta, omega, no matter, or off the chart. God can take that and supercharge that. Yo, Marty McFly vehicle, and he can supercharge that, and he'll be the lightning bolt that strikes you and turbocharge you into the future, into where you are born and destined to be, your purpose. They ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. We all got an individual purpose, right? The legendary science fiction author, one of my favorite authors, Octavia Butler, she once said that forget, forget inspiration. Habit is more dependable. Habit will sustain you whether you inspire it or not. Habit is perseverance in practice. Whew. Don't quote. I love Octavia Butler, man. As a writer, she's one of my one of the people I look up to, man. And that's true. That's true. Anybody who's trying to do something, man, forget inspiration. Forget, you know, we always be waiting. Hey, I'm going to wait for the day that that, pow, that lightning hit me and I get up and I just write this book. Or that lightning hit me and I get up and I just start this company or I'll write this business plan. Don't work like that. Don't work like that. Look, inspiration Inspiration is set by your mood. You know what I'm saying? Your mood is set by your emotion. Your emotion is controlled by chemicals in your brain. Look, there was a psychological thing set by our nature, man. You do not want to rely on those to get to your purpose. Problem is, our basic instinct wants to prepare us to really just defend, to, to save our lives. Really, that's what our, our instinct is basically about, right? Run from a bear, run from a lion, run from a saber-toothed tiger. That's really what our instinct is about. That's what our brain is wired to shoot these chemicals out about, right? It's, but in these days and times, you don't need to run from a bear and run from a saber-toothed tiger, right? We don't have those kind of threats. So what happens is our brain still operates in the same way. So there's certain things, there's certain things where our eyes can see and we will trigger as threats, we'll receive as threats, and they could just change the chemistry of our brain real quick and that throw our emotions all off. Look, we're fueled by it. You know, that's how we have survived on this planet. That's the way our engine can be affected, right? This is why people who suffer from anxiety issues like me, you know, the one, the biggest thing that can concern us is the morning because as soon as you wake up, your eyes start receiving things, your, 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 all of your senses start receiving things, and that fluctuates your brain chemistry, and it can tell you to be scared of some things, right? Too often, we let our emotions control our actions. But I'm here to tell you, do not obey your emotions. You can feel them, don't obey them, right? And I studied this thing one time, you know, there's a chart out there where they will show you that the way that we visually receive certain colors will trigger our emotions, whether it's happiness, fear, excitement, and in, uh, and in turn will make us do stuff. Like if you look at this chart right here, it'll show you how corporations have used colors in their logos and their brands and their designs to trigger our emotions, to make us buy from them, or to make us use their services, or to make us trust them and come back and buy again. 
They're controlling our actions because you can reliably control a person's actions through their emotions. So I'm telling you, we're gonna make a shift. We're gonna feel our emotions, but we're not gonna bail. All right, so let's talk about some things we can do to turbocharge our engine, no matter what type of engine that is, right? I'm gonna give you four things you can do. Throw up the horseman, I'm gonna give you four things you can do. Number one, read something every day. Yeah, I don't care if it's a pamphlet. I don't care if you use in the bathroom and you pick up the air, the back of the air freshener can and you read what's going on in there, all of them chemicals. I don't care what it is, but read something every day. Your brain is a muscle and it can only be sharpened if you continue to exercise it. It's just like any other muscle in your body. Number two, improve your communication. We're gonna be direct, y'all. We're gonna eliminate passive communication. Y'all don't care if it's a text, a phone call, or email, or whatever it is, I want you to stop using passive language. Before you send something out, ask yourself, am I trying to avoid doing what I need to do? Am I trying to push the buck off on somebody else? Am I trying to avoid accountability? Check yourself. And before you send it out, think about that. Maybe rewrite it, maybe don't even send it. Number three, start your day positive. Man, look, especially right now, whether it's politically, whether it's, you know, just socially, society is, is, is in turmoil, you know? And it has a, a way of affecting our emotions real quick, like instantly, as soon as you wake up, you remember all the stuff going on and you get down. So I want you to right now, take control of your social media feeds, take control of the TV shows you watch, you know what I'm saying? Have a zero tolerance policy in your social media, man. Go through your scroll and say, man, do any of this fuel me? Is any of this hitting my gas pedal? Or is it maybe some of this is throwing me in reverse? Because if it is, zero tolerance. You know, Facebook has an unfollow button. You don't even have to unfriend people. You can just stop following them so that their content does not show up in your feed anymore. Y'all still friends. You can still go find them if you want. Tell them happy birthday. But their daily content don't show up in your feed. That's key, man. Unfollow people. Drop them down. Zero tolerance. I got a zero tolerance, man. If I see somebody post something one time, post a, a fight or, you know, you post something that throw me back, boom, unfollow. I might snooze you. Maybe I, I you know, snooze means I unfollow you for 30 days and then they'll bring you back, give you a second try. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Number four, take care of your health. Like Dad Prez told us, man, health is wealth. Yeah, it is, man. Schedule you a yearly physical, man. This is not a nutrition book, but what this does talk about is how nutrition can tie into your behavior, your emotions, everything that we just talked about. It ain't just McDonald's that'll fluctuate your, uh, your emotions with the color of their brand. You can mess up your emotions by not taking care of yourself properly. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you have uh, a, a, some kind of, maybe you have a condition that you need to get taken care of. You know what I'm saying? I found out a few years ago that I have a vitamin D deficiency, like a lot of chocolate dudes. You know what I'm saying? But I will take in a lot of vitamin D. You know, so that can affect my mood. If I don't, you know, if I don't take my vitamins and if I don't eat healthy, that can that can make me be or that can make me prone to depression. Make my days go bad, you know? So don't, don't, don't start off a day bad just because you need a little sunlight. Don't blow an opportunity or waste your gift because you got bad nutrition and you, you got to a job interview late and you was hungry, you was hangry because you don't eat right. Don't do that. Schedule your physical, man. Get your health together. Health is wealth. All right, so it's time for your assignment for this chapter. First of all, you're going to drive. Right? When you take driver's ed, you could be a little scrawny 15 year old sitting in the car, holding it at 10 and two, scared to hop on the road. But you know, before those lessons is over, you got to drive. So that's what we're gonna do. Your assignment for this chapter, drive. Find something in your life. I don't care whether it's a conversation you need to have, whether it's some kind of uh, communication you need to put out, whether it's a decision you need to make, Find that thing that's giving you anxiety. Make it a big one, man. Step big, man. 
and take an active stand on it right now. Right now. Take an active stand. If it's a decision, make that move. Make a move. One way or the other, make a move. You know? Make a move. Take an active stand. No more passive language. None. Don't put it off on somebody else. Check your words. If you, are your words pointing to somebody else? Nah. You make a move. Yeah. You do it. Number two, implement a routine, right? So you watch this video, so you already started. Maybe you can also subscribe to my channel. You can click around and subscribe to a few more channels like this. But build a routine for your day. Routine maintenance, like Octavia Butler said, routine trumps inspiration. Do not wait to start building your dreams. You can drive now. I don't care whether you're trying to start a business, you're trying to write a book, you're trying to put out an album, you're trying to, you, whatever it is, start. You know, because I have three books published, a lot of people come up to me and ask me, how did you get started? How can I get started? I want to write a book. I always tell them, start. Open Google Docs right now and just start a document, whether it's one word. It's much easier to edit that one word into a book than it is to start. Start. And lastly, it's a three part assignment, y'all. Lastly, schedule a yearly physical, man. Get you as part of your routine. Schedule your yearly physical, man. Health is wealth, man. Protect your wealth. When you wake up in the morning with your, all of your abilities, that's wealth. That's capital. Don't waste it. Value it just like you would money in the bank. If you had a lot of money in the bank, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be cool if it was just draining down. You'd be like, what's up? Let me take care of it. Let me make some better investments. So do that for yourself, man. Schedule that yearly physical. Make that part of your routine, too. Build a relationship with your primary care physician. Let them get to know who you are, what you, you know, the anxieties you have, or the, the things that you prioritize, the drink, you know, where you want, what you want for your life. Y'all can work out that plan together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, man. So thanks for joining me, y'all, right here. Our next chapter is a real big one if we're driving. We got to rebuild these roads, man. We got to rebuild these roads. So now we know how to drive. We got to go back, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. I love y'all. Tune into the next one. And if you didn't catch the ones before this, go back right. Uh, you should have a link like right about there. You have a couple links, man. People out, man. Hope they can help y'all. One.